Hey everybody, this is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Vampires and Villagers. And inside this little box is a big, big game. In this game, each person is going to be taking on the role of having a crypt full of vampires that have seen better days, technically. Uh, you've been kind of beaten down by the surrounding goody-goody two-shoes and, like, just time, I guess. And uh, what's going on is basically each person is running this crypt of vampires and decided now is the time to kind of re-bolster your strength, go out and recruit more vampires into the fold, uh, maybe perhaps even turn a few local villagers over to your side by creating them, <laughs> making them your thralls, or or creating even you know brand new vampires, and at the same time trying to influence those same people, those same villagers, those same vampire hunters that happen to be living in the village nearby, uh, influencing them to go out and attack your your uh, your your you know brothers of the night, if you will, uh, and in an attempt to kind of whittle them down and maintain and, and your, you know, uh, foothold, you maintain your superiority uh, within the area. It is a fun game of attacks and uh, vampires and bloodletting and what have you. So let me go ahead and show you how the game is played, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, cool. This is Vampires and Villagers, and I've gone ahead and set up the game, so I'm not going to go through that whole process, but suffice it to say, uh, what you'll be doing is there's a bunch of different cards in the game that are uh, vampires, there are villagers, there are vampire hunters, and they're all shuffled together, and they're put into this uh, deck right there, and you're going to be drawing from that deck throughout the game. Uh, these four cards right here are the villagers that are present uh, currently uh, within the village, and they're the ones that... Um, Theoretically, uh, either the vampires are going to be killing off, because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to destroy the town. Uh, every time you destroy the town, uh, you go through a process of you know, repopulating it, which I'll show you in just a little bit. Uh, but when you do successfully destroy the town, you kind of get through that that round. And then you go to the next round, and then you do it again, and so forth, until you complete four rounds. And then at the end of four rounds, who's ever got the strongest uh, vampire group uh, will win the game. All right, you also create a discard pile, which we've done right there. You do that just with uh, some villagers. There's four cards in the discard pile. And there's two types of events. There are war events, and there are terror events. At the end of each round, whoever caused the end of the round to happen will pick... Uh, well, I, I apologize. At the end of the first round, they'll draw a war event. That's what they have to do. But after that, they can whoever ends uh, causes the end of the round to occur uh, by killing the last villager that's in, this, in the uh, town they will pick which deck they want to draw. And those events will take place, and they will continue to affect uh, the village as the game is played. Uh, so, there you go. That is a quick little rundown. And now, each player will start off with one Master Vampire. This is, like, basically kind of you. But you can... This particular vampire, it is possible for them to be uh, slain during the game. So... Technically speaking, uh, it isn't you, <laughs> because even if you lose uh, your your number one vampire, uh, you won't necessarily be out of the game. Uh, you you might you might find it difficult to win, uh, but you're not going to have that now. So then the, here are some other uh, head vampires as well uh, that the game has within the game, and each one of these has a strength total, which is up here. So this is strength 10, 10, 9, This guy's got eight, and then they have. Uh, the different abilities and powers that they have access to. And then down at the bottom, they also have uh, some keywords that describe things that they can do. Now, each person gets one Master Vampire. It's, it's dealt out randomly. So here I have uh, Count Kristoff. And uh, Count Kristoff has a Cloud of Shadows. He can sire slave. And basically what that means, siring slaves, is if you kill a Vampire Hunter, uh, you're able to take them as like a, a turned Vampire Hunter and then so that they can add to your power. Um, he gets two missed tokens if he gets killed, which is a good thing, and he can go into stealth, which is also uh, something that most Vampires can do. You can see here he also has 
um, that Cloud of Shadows ability. Uh, that is an active skill that he has that allows him to take cards that are placed out in front of you to be part of your Vampire Crypt and then put them back into your hand. Now, you're also dealt one Lesser Vampire as well. Uh, the Lesser Vampire that I was dealt to begin with is Drella here. Drella is, has a strength of six, not too shabby, and also has the Cloud of Shadows ability. Um, then also, after all is said and done, after each person has one uh, Master Vampire and one Lesser Vampire, you will shuffle all the rest of the vampires, the vampire thralls, and the villagers, and you will put them into this deck. And then after you're shuffling all of you will be you'll be dealt three more cards. And so in this case, I got um, a, a a vampire hunter, Father Alexander. Uh, I have a violent thrall, which uh, you know is obviously like you know like kind of a turned person that is willing to fight for me and these people will defend you as well which is also really good and then i got another lesser lesser vampire so each one of these has like a strength powers and what have you so game is played very very simply this is uh pretty straightforward on your turn what you'll do what you'll do is you'll draw one card and then you'll play one card so when you draw a card if it's a villager you p immediately put it within the village and so like in this case i got a farmer so i have a farmer and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and play it into the village because now there's another person in there uh, that we can go ahead and attack now, depending on which card you play, uh, different things happen. So to begin with, I'm just going to talk about if you're going to be playing a vampire. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're going to be playing a, a lesser vampire or if you're going to be playing your master vampire. No matter what, you, you have the choice of either playing them face up or face down. If you play them face up, you have access to their abilities. So like if you play Drella face up, you can have Cloud of Shadows. Remember that has the action that allows me to take a card that's on the board and put it back into my hand. Now, but if you place them face down, you hide them basically so they don't know exactly what you're playing. And at that point you can place up to two stealth tokens onto the cards, uh, and those stealth tokens are things that allow you to attack villagers and also can help you defend if you're attacked as well. Um, if you play a thrall, you get the exact same options. If you play them face up or face down, if you play them face down, you get to put stealth tokens on them if you want. Uh, your stealth tokens are limited by your supply, of course. If you play a thrall face up, you can, as a one-time effect, kill uh, uh, like a person within the village, like, and that is the, an action that they can do. Um, later, if you choose to reveal a thrall by turning it over on your turn, you also are able to take advantage of their skills, and sometimes their skills allow you to attack the uh, villagers as well. Uh, so, like for this particular uh, thrall, um, he has cutthroat, which allows him to attack, and he has rage and terror. With Rage, uh, he's able to defeat uh, two villagers uh, if he is defending my crypt against uh, villagers that are attacking. And um, with Terror, uh, basically you have to have a hunter uh, attack my crypt if he's available because of the fact that he's just so terrifying, uh, they, 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 they'll, they'll run away. Uh, the re how do you attack without a hunter? Well, there are certain villagers that have the leadership uh, ability, and if they have that, then they can lead attacks on crypts. And as I said, Cutthroat, when he's revealed, I can also kill a villager as well. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him down and I'm going to put a token on him like so. The reason I'm going to do that is because this makes him look like a vampire. And so when somebody decides to attack my crypt, what will happen is, is that they will pick which card they want to attack. And if they attack my thrall, then, you know, that isn't as bad as, say, you know, launching a big giant attack on my master vampire, if I happen to put that down as well. So, I mean, it's something that you want to watch out for. And also you can kind of hide as well. And, and, and you kind of like lie in the weeds, if you will. So, I mean, that, those are your options as far as with vampires. Now, if you have a hunter, what you can do is you can then put it down and attack somebody else's script, just like I was explaining. You just place it, you say, I'm going to attack. So if I was doing it here, I'm going to make this attack upon your crypt. Then you're going to have a crypt attack, which you're going to then resolve uh, at the end of your turn. 
So, uh, other than that, I mean, the big thing is, is that if you kill villagers, if you are the person to clear out the village, you get a bonus of getting one of these giant bat tokens. That's a really good thing, because if you get a giant bat token, that's worth extra points at the end of the game. They also have some other powers that they give you. Um, but also, if you were able to kill sets of adventures, you get bonuses as well. Or if you just happen to kill a lot of uh, adventurers, villagers, not adventurers, uh, if you happen to kill sets of villagers, you get bonuses, and then large numbers of villagers, you get bonuses as well. If you kill two identical uh, villagers, so if like you killed these two farmers, uh, that would be enough to get you a giant bat token. If you kill three uh, particular uh, villagers, you get a bonus as well. And you can get both of the bonuses. So if you kill this logger, this farmer, and this farmer, you not only would get one giant bat token for killing three villagers, but you would also get one for killing these particular two. Now, if there's a situation where there was only three villagers left in the, in the, in the uh, village, and you did the same thing, killing the two farmers and that one, you would actually get three tokens because of the fact that not only did you kill two farmers, identical and also kill three for having three you also cleaned out the village which gains you that bonus as well all right so i'm gonna like also now since that's you know kind of explained let me just go ahead and skip ahead to like actually doing a hunter attack on a crypt so let's just say um somebody decided to attack me with, with father father alexander here and let me go ahead and put a stealth token on there. Oh, before I do that, I apologize. Let me just talk a little bit more about stealth tokens. If you don't have an attack on uh, that you're resolving as far as um, you know going and attacking with with a, with a hunter off in, in another crypt, what you can do is um, you can use your stealth tokens at that point to take action. So I should I shouldn't say you can't. If, if you're not doing the other thing, you can do attacks and do stealth actions, but this is, I'm, I'm going to come back to attacks. With stealth actions, what you can do is you can expend a stealth token to kill any of the villagers that happen to be inside the village at that time, um, as long as they don't have what's called the fearless ability. If they have the fearless ability, uh, then you can't kill them with a stealth action. Uh, you can also use a stealth action to peek at, at either of the event card decks and peek at the top of the deck or uh, reshuffle the entire deck. You know, so like if you peek at it and you don't like that, that particular event that's coming up, you can reshuffle that and hopefully get that towards the bottom of the deck so it doesn't happen. All right, so that's stealth actions. So now how you handle attacks. To begin with, uh, any vampires that you have that are face up or, ha or have the ability to make an, a direct attack on a villager and kill them, uh, that they just get to attack and do so. Uh, remember, though, revealing your vampire does kind of tell the other players what's there, and then they can figure out what's the best way to attack you and take that particular vampire out. If there are any tokens on the, the vampire when you re reveal them, uh, you are allowed to recycle those so you don't lose them uh, when you reveal them. Uh, as I said before, thralls, when you reveal them, Sometimes they'll have the ability to make an attack upon the the group, uh, but that's the only time they get to do that. They don't have a direct attack that they're able to use on the, on the village. So you also, if you have a uh, a a vampire that is revealed, you are able to then use their special ability, like you know the cloud of shadows or what have you. They they can use their special abilities as well, uh, and you can do this in any order. You can re you know reveal them. Uh, Use your special ability, make an attack, make an attack, use special ability. But you can only use the special abilities once during your turn. You can't use them multiple times. All right, so now let's say on somebody else's turn, as I said, they decided to play Father Alexander on me. So I'm going to say, like, maybe they got lucky and they picked my master vampire and they're attacking him. So to handle a crypt attack, one of the first things you do is when you play a hunter or a villager that happens to have the fearless, or I'm sorry, the leadership ability on somebody else, uh, then you're going to select the target, and then that person is forced to reveal that particular thing that was attacked. Now, the interesting thing is, is that actually, um, since he has the word of truth ability, uh, he forces uh, me to reveal all of my cards unless I pay a stealth token to keep them hidden. 
any stealth tokens that may have been on my vampire can either be redistributed to another uh, card that I have in my crypt or put back into my supply. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I don't care if my thrall, uh, you know, have, ends up being revealed because I'm going to reveal them to defend myself anyway. But I am going to spend the, the, the token in keeping this particular uh, vampire hidden at this time. The reason for that is because I am able to then, after I make these choices, I can expend the stealth token that is on that vampire to kill uh, one of the villagers that happens to be in, in the, uh, the village. And this guy right here, the logger, has a strength of two. So I'm going to kill him because that's going to decrease the power of the attack that's coming. Because right now we have an attack of four and eight total that's coming in to attack. Now I get to use the power of my Violent Thrall to attack the villagers as well. I, since I have Rage, I'm allowed to kill two uh, of the uh, villagers that are attacking me. So I'm just going to go ahead and take out these two farmers and put those in the discard as well. And so now the plans of my opponent are kind of dashed because of the fact that he didn't realize that I had this the Violent Thrall uh, waiting in the wings. And I have enough power now that I'm going to be able to defeat the attack because of the fact that there is a 1 and a 1 and you know Father Alexander has a 4, so that's a 6 total. And Count Kristoff and my Violent Thrall have a total of 10, so I've won. So in this case, and I'm going to kind of say if I'd lost to it just so I can explain it. So in this case, if that attack had gone through, uh, what will happen is is that since I defeated it, Father Alexander actually is going to be become a turned vampire for me because of the fact that I have gone ahead and defeated uh, a hunter. And actually I've bolstered my ability with being able to put another uh, vampire in my brood, if you will. Uh, if the there are hunters that are they, they have like what's called the unbreakable trait if they are unbreakable uh, then you cannot turn them you just kill them instead um, if however let's just say for example there was enough villagers enough power maybe I didn't have him and, and so things turned against me my vampire what happens to him, he isn't killed automatically. If they attacked a, a thrall, they're destroyed. They're, they're discarded, they're gone, they're done. But and if a vampire is defeated, what happens is you're going to go ahead and take a look at them, and you're going to look at the mist tokens. Are there. Like, this guy has two mist tokens. So what happens is, is that I have to go ahead and reach into here, and I can't look at the backs of these, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to collect two mist tokens. Let's just collect these two, and I'm going to place those on that particular... Uh, vampire. Oh, and I should mention one other thing. What I do is because of the fact that I have control over him, I, if I, I'm sorry, if, if when you win and actually turn, uh, turn the, the person, you actually have this link to put them together because if you ever do lose, um, if you ever go ahead and put uh, the, the this card, either they're discarded for whatever reason or put back in your hand, um, you lose the link to control this and then you have to discard them. So just, that's why you, what those tokens are for. But anyway, getting back to uh, the missed tokens. So um, at the end of my next turn, because basically this vampire has uh, assumed mist form uh, so they can hide, uh, at the end of my next turn, I reveal the mist tokens that I have, and some of them only have uh, one. So in this case, I'm going to take the best of the two available. So in this case, I'm going to take the minus one. That gives me a seven strength. Now, there's some in there that are like minus fours and things like that, and those are bad. Obviously, like, you know, here, like minus three, minus four, minus five. If the strength in the village um, is greater than the strength of... The, the my adjusted strength of my vampire, then they, when I reform, they put the torch to me and they actually kill the vampire at that point, which is obviously bad news if it happens to be your master vampire or well, any vampire for that because you don't want to lose them. So the thing is that you, on your next turn, you're going to be trying to get that village. If there's like actual like villagers in there, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and, and try to wipe them down as much as possible while still leaving one or two in there because you don't want, to, don't want the village to get restocked before the end of your turn. But you want to make sure you get it down so you have less of a chance of losing your vampire. All right, so that's that. That's how the attacks work. Now, events. 
So after somebody cleans out uh, the village, you're going to draw an event. And the events just have different things that occur, and they're going to have uh, certain effects. So here is um, uh, Trial by Fire. All other crypts must immediately discard a thrall, a slave, or a lesser vampire. Uh, crossbows and Priest of Lizards. Destroy one lesser vampire from one player's crypt. And so these are obviously um, different powers and effects that you're going to have that you're going to be able to use when they have them. And then of course there is things that just a rare moment of peace persists. Now remember you get to pick one of the two after the first round you get to, you get to pick which deck you want to pick from. So Terror Events is uh, Witch's Curse. The village now has a maximum limit of six villagers or all villagers lose combat skill. Thralls automatically defeat one additional villager during crypt defense until a priest enters the game. Uh, each time a villager with combat skill enters a villager without leadership or combat is removed. And so the terror ones are slightly different. And they they kind of tend to be more of an all-encompassing effect uh, that occurs and that, that has uh, a longer lasting uh, chain change to what happens. But in this case, so when they when after the turn is done, uh, after you, you've cleaned out the village, you replenish it with up to six cards. And if you get anything that isn't a villager, they are discarded. So here is a lesser vampire. So we're just going to discard that one. Um, here is a fisherman. Let's see here. Farmer. Mechanic. Farmer. Paranoid thrall. Can't have him or her, I should say. Uh, can't have a vampire. And can't have a thrall. Uh, and uh, can't have a hunter. Let me see here. Ah, there we go. And this is actually a pretty cool one. I'm glad I got this one. So, um, a firefighter, uh, Callahan, uh, has leadership. So, like, when you, uh, you can take, as, as a turn, like, in, you can take, uh, as an action, you can take that card into your hand. So you're able to play it as an attack instead of having to wait for a hunter. So you can actually have the firefighter lead an attack on somebody else's crypt. And also the dodge ability allows them to dodge, uh, attacks that uh, that the thralls have. And so then you just replenish it, and then as long as this isn't the fourth turn, uh, you will just keep playing, uh, and then you're done. If this is the fourth turn that you cleaned out the village, the game actually ends. Uh, whoever has the most power in their crypt, you count, you count the total power of the different uh, thralls and vampires that you have, and then you get one extra point for each uh, giant bat that you have. Uh, and then whoever has the most points at that point uh, will win the game of Vampires and Villagers. Um, I love the little, I love the cute theme. I love the cute art in this game. Um, it is always fun uh, to play the bad guy. Uh, there are definitely cards that like play up to uh, the different uh, like genres or whatever. It's like obviously this is a uh, Buffy the Vampire. Uh, uh, reference and this is like Christy Hope and uh the vampire hunter that is uh unbreakable obviously she cannot be turned but i mean there's definitely like things that uh the game definitely has a sense of humor but it also you know it, it it's one of those games that um has a lot going on and has a lot of player interaction i do greatly enjoy uh, when I'm able to directly affect another player's ability uh, to play and to win the game. But I'll talk more about all of that uh, in my final thoughts. Now then, I have never been like a big like Vampire the Masquerade person. I never played that RPG. I had some friends that did in college, but never really grabbed me as something that I'd be interested in. Um, I didn't really like the whole interview with a vampire type of vampire. You know, I always just kind of thought that was a little... I don't know, just not my thing. You know, I'm more of a Nosferatu type of vampire if, guy, if you will. Like, the more brutal ones. I really like the movie Near Dark. Um, and so, like, the whole idea that th these vampires were just like, okay, the gloves are off. We're, we're, we're going to destroy this village. We need, to, we need to eat them. We need to go ahead and get as much blood as we possibly can. We need to convert a few of them over to our side. And we need to basically reestablish ourselves as being this kind of brutal uh, vampire family. Um, I, I really liked that aspect of the game. I mean, and plus the fact that, like, it's just, it's one of those games that, like, you learn it pretty quickly, but there's a lot of stuff going on, and I like games 
that where there's hidden information that you're keeping from the other players as far as you know, do I play this vampire face down or face up? You know, do, do I want to use their powers, but I don't want to tell them what I have because as soon as people can see it and see the, how much strength you have, then they know exactly what they need to attack. And that's why I like those abilities like Cloak of Shadows are really, really important because of the fact that you can put cards back in your hand and then you can replay them. And then people are wondering, well, you know, which card did they play? Which, you know, which one's down now? And as far as w which attacks they're going to do. Because, uh, you know, attacking, you have to attack the other, other vampires. You can't, everybody just can't just keep collecting more and more vampires and just, you know, getting more and more strength out there. You, you need to have, uh, like, somebody, like, taking it to you and trying to take you out and, and removing you and, and, and you know, taking away your victory points, basically. Which is something I like. I like games that, like, you know, it's like I'm directly affecting uh, how many points you're going to have at the end of the game. That that that's a fantastic aspect of this game. Um, but the fact is, is that you you have to like kind of that whole I think that you think that you think that I think. You know, I I said that in lots of different videos, but I love that aspect. I love because it basically puts like a mental challenge between me and the other players at the table as far as what particular card I've placed and and you know and it's like what's it going to happen when that card is revealed and as I've also said in many of my videos I like reveal moments I like the tension that that the the hidden information presents and I like that release of the tension uh when you the the actual reveal happens so um you know the theme is a lot of fun the art's a lot of fun uh I like the idea of being able to play a bad guy and being a a ruthless vampire instead of like some vampire wearing a puffy shirt and hiding in the shadows if you will and you know for that reason and just the fact that like it's just like i said it's flat out fun um i, I had a lot of fun with this one so if you like the idea of playing uh, a, a vampire and like you know terrorizing a town and you like the idea of actually then terrorizing the other players at the table who are trying to do the exact same thing then i think you should probably check this out if you dig the theme um it's a, definitely going to be a big bonus for you as well and like i said the tongue-in-cheek humor with the different uh, the different vampires, the different named hunters and what have you uh, certainly doesn't hurt as well. So there you go. If you have any questions about vampires and villagers, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, I'm the Undead Viking, and you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. Alright, bye-bye.